doing one MLB, one WNBA player prop here on Price Picks for Friday, June 16th. It is Flex Friday on Price Picks. Again, $20 protected play. Before I get started, there's a link in the description below. 100% deposit match using the link or promo code TUFF on Price Picks. Discord link in the main server, completely free in the description below. And then Patreon link in there as well, where I post all the plays here that I'm making on Price Picks for each given sport that I do play. Again, I'm not a gambling expert, and this is not financial advice. There's simply just the place I'm personally looking at making, hopefully giving you guys some insight and analysis to then make your own player prop decisions here. But let's get right into it, you guys. Again, no one's pressing submit on those parlays other than yourselves, but let's get into it. I got two plays here that I am targeting from this Friday, June 16th slate. One MLB, one WNBA. Let's not waste any time, you guys. Let's just get right into it. So the first play is going to be MLB live play. We're going to go all the way down here. We're going to go to Michael Kopech, or Kopech, over two and a half strike, pitcher strikeouts through the first two innings here. So Michael Kopech, in my opinion, having a pretty strong bounce back here. He's always been, like, had a potential as a pitcher right and it's just struggled to find like consistent um you know games and you know putting games together here but i mean you take a look at kind of his last couple games i mean he's looking five seven four seven eight four two six six five 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 and like the earned runs like three five and four but really over like his last 10 games or what is this like eight games one and run four two zero zero four two and zero and then the strikeouts have been there um, we look at four strikeouts, nine strikeouts, four strikeouts, seven, two, five. But if you take a look over his last five games, 10 Ks, nine Ks, 10 Ks, nine Ks, and six Ks versus Miami, who is a tough team to strike out. But I like his first two innings, two and a half strikeouts. So we need three strikeouts from him in the first two innings. Let's talk about why I like this. So really quickly, um, Seattle, sixth highest strikeout percentage versus right-handers on the year, 24.9 strikeout percentage against righties. And it happens, Michael Kopech over the last 30 days, um, of players pitching 20 plus innings he's got the fourth highest strikeout percentage or k per nine innings right these 12.6 strikeouts per nine innings now obviously he's not going to pitch nine innings here he also has the second highest strikeout percentage in baseball at 37.6 so you know taking a player mlb live for the first two innings with the 37.6 strikeout percentage and 12.6 strikeouts per nine innings uh, just right off the bat right there that that gives us a strong chance right um, taking a look at the potential Seattle Mariners lineup here, we got look at the look at the K percentage for these guys. I mean, we got Julio Rodriguez at twenty five percent, Kalenic at thirty four point eight, Teoscar Hernandez thirty point nine, Ra Raleigh, Eugenio Suarez, and Mike Ford all over twenty five percent. The team as a whole twenty four point seven on the season, but you look at these guys, you guys, we got literally one, two, three, four, five, six, six guys in this lineup with a strikeout percentage over 25%. All right, we took we take a look at Michael Kopech, right? This is on uh, Baseball Savant. We take a look at, I mean, him being able to hit this, right? So like his last outing versus Miami, right? He First two batters, he hits them, and then he strikes out Dela Cruz, Sanchez, and Yuli Gurriel to get out of the inning. So he literally hit this in the first inning. Um, we look at this matchup versus the Tigers, right? First uh, batter, McKinstry, ground fields out and then he strikes out three straight guys Baez, Badu, and Torkelson versus the Angels um Moniak strikes out uh Trout walks Otani gets hit by a pitch and then Renfro walks that's two strikeouts in the first inning um and then he gives up two home runs and then he strikes out Ursula for the to hit the over on this um against the uh Cleveland Guardians who are a tough team to strike out he strikes out Quan he strikes out Rosario Ramirez fields out, and then he strikes out three straight guys. So he's hit the over on this. Let's see, like, he's literally hit the over on this in... Um, he's hit the over this in three straight outings, right? Three straight outings, and he's hit the over on this pretty easily. But we take a look at some other right-handed starting pitchers versus the Mariners. So let's just take a look at these last four guys. Um, Yuri Perez, right? We take a look at him versus the Mariners. He uh, walks J.P. Crawford. Julio Rodriguez fields out. And then uh, he gets Ty France to strike out for one strikeout. And then Tiasco Hernandez fleets out to end the inning. And then the next inning, he gets Kalenic and Cal Raleigh. So uh, Yuri Perez, a rookie pitcher, he hits the over on this. Um, he hits the over on this. We look at uh, Edward Cabrera here, who just faced Seattle not that long ago. He got uh, J.P. Crawford to field out. And then he strikes out Julio Rodriguez, Ty France. And then he walks, force out, single home run, field out, walk, strike out. So he doesn't get another guy out to J.P. Crawford. So... Yuri, uh, Edward, Edward Cabrera finished with two strikeouts. We look at Griffin Canning, right, who finished that game against uh, Seattle with seven strikeouts. Griffin Canning here, obviously not even close to the pitcher, the power pitcher that Michael Kopech is, in my opinion. Um, Griffin Canning gets um, Julio Rodriguez to strike out. 
and then he gets uh, Kalenic, right, with to end the inning, and then he gets Raleigh and Suarez. So he hit the over on this, and then Shohei Otani here as well. Um, he gets, uh, let's see, J.P. Crawford to walk, and then he gets Rodriguez to strike out, and then uh, Ty France to field out for two outs here, and then, yeah, he hits the over on this as well. He gets Ford and Eugenio Suarez. So it is a great spot. We've seen uh, three of the last four pitchers burst the Mariners, hit the over on this, and again, Michael Kopech. Just really, really starting to dominate as a pitcher here. I mean, we take a look at Kopech. 12.6 strikeouts per nine innings, like I said. The second highest strikeout percentage over the last 30 days here in all of baseball. Um, I mean, if you just compare, like, those guys I just named, um, of these guys, uh, Perez, Cabrera, Canning, and Otani, three or four guys at the over on this, with Cabrera being the only miss. Um, and we take out time to take a look at these guys. I mean, Edward Cabrera is down here at 27.6. Michael Kopech has a 10 percentage higher um, strike up percentage than Cabrera here. So I like Michael Kopech been really locked in as of late, um, to have over two and a half Ks the first two innings versus the Seattle Mariners. And the second play here is going to be a WNBA prop and it's going to be a fantasy score here. Again, we only have two games on this WNBA slate today, but I'm going to go with, uh, Nyeka over 42 and a half. So actually I believe over the weekend I had this, I gave this play as a YouTube play, um, and it missed. It hooked us. She does face Minnesota on the road. She finished with 41.1 fantasy. Super tough um, hook there. She didn't really get going till the second half. So, obviously, she's going to be need to be a little bit more aggressive. But this is a home game here for the uh, Sparks. Taking a quick look at this game here. Um, it's a five-point spread. Again, playing in Los Angeles. Um, and I definitely, there's a few reasons why I like this play. One being... Um, that there's potential massive injuries for the spark. Like, they could literally be super shorthanded here. Um, Clarendon is out, as you can see here. She's been diagnosed with a partial tear, plantar fascia. fascia. Um, she's out, and then Lexi Brown is out as well. Um, so we're looking at two starters already just ruled out. And then Cheney is questionable. She's missed the last four games. She's been questionable. And then as well as uh, Jasmine Thomas, who... Hasn't been playing a ton, but she does come off the bench, and she's questionable as well with the injury. I mean, she's played a 12, 12, and four minutes over her last three games. So, I mean, that is some decent production, um, you know, for players. So, Nyeka, I mean, the Sparks could potentially be running a six-man rotation tonight. So, I mean, Nyeka in a game with a five-point spread. Also, I like that Jessica Shepard is out as well um, for the Minnesota Lynx. She's been ruled out with an illness, so, you know, she's that big center here um she blocks shots she rebounds that's a big presence in the paint for minnesota that's not going to be playing in this game as well so it should allow nyeka to really dominate in the paint um obviously minnesota is going to be running a lot smaller here um, but taking a look just more specifically at uh at nyeka here we'll take a look at her and how she's been playing this is a fantasy score game log right we need 42.6 for her to hit the over on this um she's had a nice little run here at phoenix 43.4 um, versus Seattle 52.3 versus Seattle 51.7 and then versus Chicago 47.3 all right so we look at Nyeka in games where she's played 30 plus minutes at home well, it's only been two but she's had um, two really really good games 52.8 fantasy versus Seattle uh, 27 14 4 1 and 1 uh, with three turnovers and then versus Chicago 2 47.3 fantasy with 19 14 5 2 um, and two turnovers but she just needs to take more field goal attempts in that game against Minnesota where she finished with 41.1 she only took 14 shots, but it was 11 for 14 from the field. And it's an absolute elite matchup, you guys, versus the Minnesota Lynx. The Minnesota Lynx have the worst defensive rating in the WNBA. The absolute worst defensive rating in the WNBA. And just specifically versus forwards, they give up the most points to forwards. You guys, we've gone over this. Most points to forwards, the most blocks to forwards, the second most steals to forwards, the uh, most assists to forwards, and the fourth most rebounds to forwards. Overall, they give up the uh, second highest field goal percentage to forwards and the third most field goal attempts to forwards. It's a smash spot for Nyeka here, potentially a super short rotation for the Sparks, five-point spread at home. I like Nyeka to bounce back and clear, smash the over on this um, tonight versus the Minnesota Lynx. Both these games here, later start games on the West Coast here, so you know you have ample time. I don't think maybe Nyeka might bump to 43 flat, um, but I don't think Kopech will bump either. So here are the two plays here for this video. Please, all I ask is drop a like on this video, hit that subscribe button, and as always, let's cash.